Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie here, and in this episode, we're going to explore methods. Ah uh, yes, prepare to dive into the wonderful world of Code on Demand. If you've been following along, you've already written a bunch of methods, so some of this will feel like old hat. Now, before we start, my name is Vegetarian Zombie, and I run this YouTube channel as well as Jesner.com. If you enjoy these videos and you want to see more, feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can also directly support me by joining my Patreon. By subscribing to my Patreon, you'll be able to download these videos free at Jesner.com and support what I do. These videos are also ad-free over there as well. Now for methods. Methods allow us to do something on demand. Think of methods like verbs. For example, here are some method names. Fire gun, end game, read live scoreboard, quit, and so on. These methods do some kind of action. Methods are defined on classes and structs. Each method has a header and a body. The header lets people know if the method accepts and also returns values. The body is the actual code that is run. Let's imagine we are creating a calculator class and we want to define a method. Let's break it down. The method header starts with an access modifier. Access modifiers determine what external code can access your method. Public means any code can access it. There are no restrictions. Private means only the object itself can access it. There is also protected and internal. Protected means it's available with its inheritance tree. You'll learn about inheritance soon enough. Internal means it's only accessible to its own assembly. We won't be covering assemblies in this course. Now, there are a few others, but we'll mostly be working with public and private. When a method is public, it's standard form to capitalize the first word. Also note, methods that do not have an access modifier are considered private methods by default. Next, you determine the return type. Our add method will return an int, so we put an int in the method header. If it returns an object, you'd put the class name. For example, if you had a leaderboard class, the get high score method would return a leaderboard entry. Some methods don't return anything at all, so we simply put void. Void means nothing. Kind of like my checking account. Finally, you provide parameters inside the parentheses. These are all the types that you use inside of your method body. You separate each parameter with a comma, and that's the method header. The body goes in the braces. For methods that return a value, you use the return keyword. Once the code execution reaches the return keyword, everything after it is ignored. So it's a good habit to put it at the end of a method. That said, you can put multiple return keywords in places throughout your method. For void methods, you can use the return keyword without a value. This just exits the method. That's useful if code fails some validation or something like that. You simply return out of it. Keep in mind, if your method header declares that you return a value and then you don't, you'll run into an error. The same occurs if you use a void method and try to return a value. Let's see methods in action. Okay, here we have Visual Studio Code open with the current project in progress. I'm looking at the My Object class. Before we define a method, take a look at this class one more time. Notice our class definition here we have a public class called MyObjects. Note the colon after the class name. This lets us know the class inherits from the MonoBehavior class. A MonoBehavior represents game objects in Unity. Now scroll down. You'll see there is a private variable. This variable cannot be modified outside the class. There is an important reason for this that we'll explore in the next episode. Keep scrolling and we'll find our first method. It's called Start. This is a mono behavior method. It's declared as void, meaning it won't return a value. Notice there's no access modifier. This lets us know that it's a private method. Mind you, the Unity runtime makes this behave more like a public method. Okay, let's create a method to print out a message a certain number of times. Here we declared a void method, meaning the method doesn't return a value. It's also public, so any code can access it, 
and hence it is capitalized. Now let's add some parameters. Here are the two parameters. One is a string and the other is an int. This is the method header. Now for the method body. This runs through a loop a number of times and stores the result into the messages variable. Now you need to print it on the screen when the user clicks the button. For this, you'll need to call show message, but, but there's no way to pass in your messages variable to have it print on the screen. You can do this a number of ways. One approach is to define a variable in the class to hold all the messages. This is not something I do, but let's see why for science. Comment out the other code and show message. Now return back to Unity. Run the game. And you get your messages. Okay, the code works. But does it really work well? Let's take a look. First, there's the print message method. If I call this method, I'm going to think that the method prints out messages. But it doesn't. It simply creates a string of repeated text. The method name is misleading. Next, you create a private messages variable on the class. The only purpose of this variable is to pass data between two specific methods. It has no other purpose. Its only reason for existing was to solve a problem in your code. That is, this is a short-term solution that actually makes your code brittle. But I'll be honest here. Every coder at some point will write something like this. With changing priorities and oftentimes unmovable deadlines, this is an unfortunate reality. In these cases, you'll promise you'll come back to the code and refactor it to make it usable. Maybe you will, but you are essentially taking out a loan that you'll write good code tomorrow for using a hacky solution today. This is known as tech debt, and it accumulates over time. Always try to write good, clean code and avoid shortcuts. Address the root problem of issues. You will accumulate tech debt, but your goal is to minimize it. Sure, your end user won't notice at first, but if your code fills with these kind of hacky solutions, you'll find it harder to maintain and add features. Less features means less engagement, which may result in lower sales. So yes, it does have a real-world impact. Also, your coworkers may end up cutting your brakes, so strive to write clean code. Okay, let's fix this. First, the show message is where code is printed on the screen. Update the print message to the following. Now back to show message.
this is much better. Save and return back to Unity. Run the game. And we get the same result. Now, before we dive into a challenge, let's do a thought experiment. What happens when you alter external variables to methods? Do they change outside the methods when you change them inside of them? Let's create a method to find out. This is just a simple method that changes some values. Now write this. Okay, you create a fighter, you pass it into the method, and you make alterations. You also pass in an int value and change it. What will be printed on the screen? What will be the fighter's name? How much gold will there be? Really think about this. Now return to Unity, run the game, press the button. You get Frank the Barbarian with 100 gold. Is this what you expected? Let's break it down. When you pass data into a method, that data is copied. In the case of the gold, the value 100 is copied into the method. The method changes that copy to 200, and after the method, that value is discarded. So the gold outside the method is never affected. But in the case of classes, i.e. reference types, you actually copy the reference to the object. This means the object can be altered inside the method body. That's something to keep in mind whenever you use classes inside of methods. Okay, now for your challenge. In the MyObjects class, create a new method that returns a new fighter object. We call these factory methods because they make objects. The method should take in a name and a strength, then print out the fighter and show message. Pause the video and try it out. Okay, welcome back. Let's put together your first factory method. These types of methods are useful when you're creating lots of the same type of objects. First start by creating a method header. Not too bad. Here we set the access modifier to public and it returns a fighter class. The name create fighter is capitalized since it's a public method. It has two parameters, name and strength. Now for the body. Now uncomment some of your code, use your method call instead.
save your file, play your game, press the button, and you see your fighters.